Hey everybody, Anthony here, FSU Off-Road. Welcome back to another video and welcome back to our build. In the last video, we kind of briefly went over our brake system and our steering system. Well, a lot has changed since then with the suspension and uh, let's, let's see what's been going on. As most of you are aware, our coilovers have arrived and it changed a few things on the rear suspension, which we went over. Went ahead and got full droop angles and got the limit strap actually here along with our primary springs. Everything is good to go in the rear. As for the front, we did a lot of changes up here, especially with the coilovers and where they originally sit. And we originally had mounts set on the back side of the axle. That way we could allow for longer shocks or longer coilovers. However, I didn't like that placement. I figured that it would cause a lot of issues, could possibly break off. So I wanted it on top. And what we did was we just did a custom brackets here on top, giving us a better angle than before, as well as um, a better mounting location on top. Now, I've also been working on a few other things aside from the suspension. As you can see, you got two dual batteries behind the seats there, all tucked away. Uh, that's something that we've worked on. We've also worked on linkages and, and shifters, and we have it going through the dash in here. As you can see right there, loops around down to the transmission, uh, as well as transfer case shifters and all that. So all that has been taken care of um, as well as the brake system, which is what I want to finish up in this video. What we did was we used a Wheelwood dual master cylinder with two Wheelwood master cylinders up here with a TMR Customs um, 10 to one brake pedal. However, I did modify it for better placement within the chassis with my modified bracket that I had built up there in the chassis. The only thing I wish is we would have done a reverse style um, where the master cylinders would run in for our brake stop that I'm going to put in there. But before we get into all that, I'm gonna kind of get an idea of how we're gonna run everything and what we're gonna be using. Back here behind the front axle, all of our calipers are the same, that way we can run just one brake pad throughout everything. What this is gonna be is a 1 8 MPT going to a soft line. And I'm gonna do a soft line here because this is um, obviously a moving component and we need that flexibility. And then what I plan on doing is running it to a hard line and then teeing it off to a soft line up, running it up to our master cylinders. Um, and then do the same thing on the rear and I want to keep everything the same um, all the links everything like that the same that way one one extra brake line can go to all four corners and something like that um, we have a little assortment of brake fittings T's inverted 3 8 to 3 a ends you know the 3 um, 3 8 24 for the hard lines and just kind of show you what I was talking about as far as using flex line. I've already done it in the rear, at least started it on one side. So we got a soft line. We got a soft line coming from the cylinder to a hard line, and we'll hard mount that onto the uh, chassis. We'll center it up to the T, and then we'll shoot it along through the chassis there. And I'm just using these little zip zip tie tabs with a little rubber boot to protect it. And then obviously just standard standard brake fittings for that. Basically what I did to get these hard lines installed or at least going to the center is I took a measurement from here and how I was gonna route it with the tape measure and gave it a little bit of extra and used our 316 brake line, straightened it out to that length, cut it, obviously flared it, and then used a piece of tubing this is one and a half whatever you, whatever size you have to add my bends to the brake line without crimping it up bending it putting a dent or anything like that in it and got it pretty close to where it'll be so we just got to do that same thing on this side get it all straight flared and installed just wanted to bring you in here kind of show you we finished up the hard lines got it running to the top 
to our centerpiece I just went ahead and drilled and tapped it to the housing 5 16 there to, to secure our T there ran the hard line over there as you can see it's all mocked up in here now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some uh, PTFE stainless steel brake line um, it's just a flex hose line and what we're going to do is we're going to use these self crimpers just like from the steering um, except for these are for the PTFE lines um, and these are for pressure as well so uh, these are all steel don't get the aluminum ones or anything like that you want to get the steel ones uh, for brake lines so what we got to do is um, I am going to get a 45 degree fitting to go here that way to run it to the upper control arm as you can see we got our trail gear brake line holders in place and then we're just going to run this to the chassis up to the chassis and then i'm kind of just working my way from the rear to the front now you might be wondering why all these unions and things like that well if i keep the pieces small yes i do have more pieces to fail however keeping them small um, will allow me easier um, fixes in the future that way i don't have to put splices or unions or anything like that crimp them in there i can just actually just replace them step one wake up really gonna rise with the sun step two get some good some food in you step three you grow hard about what you want to be step four fuck everybody just do your thing it's now saturday been working on the the brake lines a little bit here for our brake lines on the bottom here ran hard lines up the frame 90 here on the back side here and what I did was I actually turned it up on the chassis here and then what we're going to do is I ran it to our lock just a just like a little brake lock part of ultra four rules you have to have some type of a emergency style brake something that um, hydraulic line lock parking brake whatever so that's what we're going to do there instead of running it you know in and out and then back down and around and underneath i just kind of cut corners here uh, which would be perfectly fine and then i just uh, fish fish lined it around kind of put a bend there and what you saw me doing there and instead of cutting more holes out i just kind of looped it down and around and out to the master cylinders as you can see there today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day all right, as you saw, we have finished the brake lines, including the master cylinders, our line lock, everything is in place. We also have our pressure switch right there that this will run our brake lights. We can get that wired up. We can just run it back through the firewall there. So everything worked out really well. And other than everything being secured and tightened down, everything is ran. So I'm not really worried about that. There's plenty of other things left to do. And I think I'm gonna jump onto a fuel line. So now previously I went ahead and ran our vent tube off of the fuel cell wider than the fuel cell up higher at the highest point around the chassis back down wider than the fuel cell and below the fuel cell as well later I might put a shutoff valve on the vent but right now I'm not really worried about it I'm just worried about running our lines now with this fuel system and these fuel lines and everything that we're going to be running like I said everything is going to be AN6, which is basically, you know, a 3.8 PTFE line here. And what I plan on doing is I plan on running a dual fuel pump inside the tank. One keeps it cool. Two, two pumps. That way, if one does go out, we'll have a backup. It's going to come out and through our filter here. And then we're going to run it down underneath the chassis through here up to the front firewall and then once it gets there we're going to put in our aeromotive regulator 
with a return and then we're going to run the return back obviously the same way and then it will also connect up here on the fuel cell now one thing i do want to note and i want to make sure that you note whenever you're doing this if you're building a chassis or anything like that you want to make sure there's a lot of other components that are going to be going in the chassis so you have to take in consideration of that so as you know down here inside the chassis here it looks really open but unfortunately that's not really the case as we've got flooring and everything it's going to close it in especially the back part here where we um we dubbed it down that way it can kind of recess you have to take that in consideration also there's going to be exhaust on both sides so we have to take in consideration of that as well as our coolant lines they're going to be ran underneath the chassis here as well and then obviously we have to get our battery powered to our kill switch there um, so we have to make it take into consideration that as well so there's a lot of things to consider uh, and to consider whenever you're having to do this today's gonna be a good day wake up 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 as you can see behind me I have everything laid out here and I went ahead and just used some two inch tubing that I had basically cut out across I did it in on the video uh, with our first race sheet with Tinker for the reservoirs but this is going to allow me to install our filter and then it's going to be able to run it down and then I changed it up I was going to run it on the passenger side but I'm going to keep everything fuel related on the on the driver's side here obviously we're feeling it on this side so i'll run our lines this way as well as the returns and then i went ahead and went ahead and methodically thought everything out of how i'm going to run it through the chassis so basically what we're going to do is we're going to run fuel lines and brake lines on this side as well as our oil cooler reservoirs so we're going to put two coolers back here one for oil and one for our transmission. So the transmission obviously can run on the passenger side and the oil cooler run on this side. So we'll run all that stuff on this side. And then on the passenger side, when I get to it, obviously our radiator lines will go down on this side and then transmission line. And then obviously with the transmission, the, the cooler will connect on this side, as well as on this side, I'll run our electrical um, to our kill switch on this side as well. I didn't want anything electrical with fuel related, so kind of separate those two. Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, y'all. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. You always gotta fight and hide from the demons, y'all. Negative thoughts are poison, they ride. Okay, now that we got the fuel ran from the rear to the front, I kind of just went ahead and uh, routed it through the chassis here, used some zip, uh, just some zip uh, tie tabs through there. And you might be wondering why I put a 90 here and running it up through the transmission tunnel. Well, that is because the oil cooler lines will run through here. And it is a super tight fit. Um, ideally, I would love to run it down through here but it's super close to the headers and I don't want the fuel to get hot when I run it up on the back side here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just run it up through the transmission housing and then we'll wrap it from there. I'll be able to secure it obviously like so. And then we'll put our regulator here and we'll run our regulator to our fuel rail. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna start working on a mount for this regulator. Like I said, this is an air equipped regulator. Um, we're just gonna build some brackets for it and running our pressure transducer from Holly. As you, if you didn't know, you know now, we're gonna be running a Holly system on this and um, everything is behind me. So yeah, it's all waiting on me. So let's just knock this out as fast as possible and um, as quality as possible. That makes a difference. I'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost uh, Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence Okay, well I'm gonna call it a night here But I just wanted to show you what all we finished up As you saw, we built a little bracket Got a regulator mounted And ran it down through the transmission tunnel there And then our lines ran And what I did 
Is that just zip tie them for now um, to make sure I had enough to run back. And honestly, I wasn't really sure if I would have enough. I knew I had to get some more uh, AN line, but it was just enough to make it back to the return. So that worked out perfect. My name is Taylor. My husband is Anthony. And this is our journey with Tinkerita. October marks our one year anniversary of my husband working his butt off in the garage. <laughs> because clearly I haven't done a lot, but I really truly appreciate all the support that you guys give my husband with Tinkerita and all of his endeavors with Jeep stuff. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, you probably should by now. Like Taylor was saying, it marks one year working on the Jeep and just transforming what was a box of tubes into a full-blown race Jeep um, for King of Hammers and Ultra 4 Racing. And like she said, I'm just really thankful for all you guys' support and help, motivation and all this. Um, your comments keep me going, uh, especially on the days that I don't feel like working on this. Uh, it's been a long journey. We still got a lot to do. But I just wanted to thank you guys and also give you a live update in this video um, as to where we are. As you can see, Tinkerita has come a long ways in a year and we're pretty much at a point to where it's time to start stripping this thing. Uh, aside from a few brackets and a few gussets that I need to install here and there, um, we're actually in the process of disassembling um, Tinkerita here and going through and do a final weld on everything um, and just starting to put it back together in its race condition, race spec. So aside from those few things, um, that's where we are. I just want to thank you guys for um, a great year and growing the channel and just being supportive of this and just following along. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll have obviously a disassembly video of this in the near future and uh yeah now let's get back to the video you grow you show yourself a foundation stay away from all the shit that causes temptation i know that i like to do it because it's all right you can see got our zip tie tabs put in place same location as our fuel side and what i did was i took a, a 3 8 bolt ground the back of the head and then just tacked it in place and this will be our ground stud for the batteries there and then i just went ahead and got some of these military um, terminals here and i like them because you can secure it and then you can put whatever you want on the post and so obviously copper wire and things like that are really expensive well some things that aren't super expensive are battery cables or, or jumper cables or whatever you want to call them and depending on what size you want to run and how far you need um, just order a set of jumper cables and then you can actually just cut them and then strip them down the center and you're going to double the length so if you got 25 foot jumper cables uh, you'll have 50 foot overall and i've done this on multiple vehicles and it works out really well and it kind of gives you a little bit of a leniency on what um, gauge wire one and two how far you need to run it and um, it's just a lot cheaper to do this that's one of the reasons why i use the jumper cables now for the lugs there's a there's a few crimping options um one if you're in a pinch you can get you just a, a, a punch like a 3 16 punch and you can center punch it dead in the center there and it'll hold it just like uh, you would on a on a mallet style or a hammer style crimper but in our case went on the good old amazons and just got some cable crimpers designed for uh, you know larger cable this goes from zero to eight cable so we'll just use these to crimp all things and then to finish it off i got some shrink wrap that we'll put on there to finish off the cables okay we got our cables all ran to the kill switch up there and then obviously run throughout the chassis kind of paired them up made them a little bit looser you don't want to make them too tight just in case you ever got to change anything or reroute it you want to have a little bit of extra slack now the reason why we're getting this um, power to the switch is because next we're going to be start working on this dash and i have everything to 
start getting everything built behind it and also our holly system so that's what we're going to start doing now getting stuff figured out and then we'll have our power supply to the switch there and everything is going to be a-okay went ahead and stripped the dash out as you can see here minus the front panel because we have all this stuff that we have to kind of get put on the dash or behind the dash um, including our holly digital dash gps's radio comms things like that so we have a lot to do um, electrically with this as well as relays um, i want to build um, a watertight box for all of our relays for fuel pumps and fans and things like that um, as well as you know making this easily accessible we did that already with the access pins on the dash but we also have to build something up here to support it all so it's kind of where we are now and um, yeah we have a lot to do but we're making progress and once this dash is complete it's really going to look like we've made some progress we have but electrically i think it's really just going to make it look overall better so let's knock this out I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wanted to bring you in here and show you how the dash has turned out so far Obviously we got our GPS and it's centered up here with the steering wheel That way I can see the screen while we're driving We got our Holly EFI dash comms and another GPS so yeah it's turning out great however we still have to build a top piece here and as you can see I started mocking up with cardboard here uh, obviously this is going to be our holly management system there but I also have to make room for a relay box some waterproof relays uh, as well as our switch pros um, box so I have to make it big enough for that. I don't have the switch pros here yet. However um, We have to incorporate that and it all has to fit underneath the dash So I don't know if that's big enough yet. So happen to work on that But I wanted to show you how the dash turned out so far Templed out the things that we are going to need for Relays and things like that and I wanted to mock it up on this before I transposed it onto aluminum and got this built but basically get it fitted up here because our quick access panels will line up right here that way we can access everything from up top and then we'll just run our wires and everything that way and then the holly harness can come through the firewall and then we can route it that way and I want to use this pillar right here um, the V in the support bar to run our wires and everything up the chassis and out out back for um, communication antennas brake lights and things like that I want to think I'm going to finish off this video by coming to the front finishing up a few things here before we start um, just disassembling the chassis so what I did up here I don't even know if I even mentioned this but this is the AccuSump pump and if your motor ever loses oil pressure what it's going to do is it's going to shoot oil um, into the supply um, on the back side there where we have our, our cooler our oil cooler and this will the oil cooler will have a one-way check valve that way when this does shoot oil pressure into the motor um, it can't go back backwards through the system what it'll do is it'll actually supply it to the motor that way it never starves for oil but anyways what I did was I just built some custom brackets here and it mounts up perfectly behind the winch here and um, just a uh, a few bolts will hold it down and then what we'll do is we'll actually have a supply line that'll run down here and feed it to the back side of the motor now the last thing i want to do on this video is go ahead and figure out our air intake I've, as you can see here i could use a straight air intake cone if i wanted to do that problem is if you have one air filter and it gets clogged or whatever your motor's gonna have a hard time breathing, it's gonna bog down. So, what I did, went on the evil base, and I got a dual intake. Now, 
these cones are obviously a little bit smaller, but the great thing about that is it's an air filter, they're upgradable. So I plan on doing bigger um, air filters themselves, but I liked it because it was the Y system, which will supply me more air um, to the motor. And what I plan on doing is getting this mounted up here in the front, roughly like so, kind of covering the AccuSelp pump and now I'll just need to get me a 45 degree bend uh, intake adapter there and then we can get this mounted up and then we'll build some brackets to keep them secured in place. It is my plan with that. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Okay, got it kind of situated in here, kind of tightened some hose clamps here. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world. Probably not going to seam or anything like that with it, but um, it is going to work. It's going to keep everything high and, um, you know, we'll obviously have two air filters. So, with that being said, now I have to build a bracket to come down and secure it on top here that way this will be nice and secure that it won't just be held together with the hose you can see and then build some wings on the side to where our hose clamp could clamp to it from the side keeps everything nice and secure there so got the air intake pretty much figured out now thank you something pump man Lots of other things. So, I think we want to wrap up the video here and start cleaning up and getting prepared for the next step, which is starting the process of stripping the chassis and really just going through everything and getting it prepped and ready for final weld mint, paint, and then what I'm looking for final installation now I know we got a lot to do yet to get it fully done however getting the chassis fully welded up and completed um, is a huge step in the right direction so it's kind of where I'm leaning towards now so with that being said I'm gonna finish the video off and I just hope you guys like what you saw make sure you like comment subscribe you know all that good stuff we'll see you guys in the next one I'm gonna go around the time.